Hey everybody, welcome to Strength Coach TV. I'm Anthony Renna. This is the show where we take you inside some of the country's top gyms, give you a tour, and then we sit down with the owners and we talk a little bit of shop. Haven't done one in a couple months because uh, A, it takes time and it takes money to, uh, to do these, to go to the different gyms, to take time out of the day. So I was looking for a, a sponsor who I can trust, somebody I could partner with. Uh, it took me a long time, and but I finally came up with a great one and that is the Marigold Food Company. Uh, they make Marigold bars and snacks. I love this company. It's a small family owned company. Marianne is a dietitian, and a lot of her diabetic clients were asking her about protein bars. And she couldn't find one that had low sugar, uh, no, no crap in it, and that they taste good. So she made them herself. Uh, these bars are really good, grass-fed protein, gluten and soy-free, non-GMO, organic ingredients, no preservatives. You gotta put them in the fridge when you get them because uh, there's no preservatives in them. Uh, and they taste amazing. Today's bar for me, dark and salty, definitely one of my favorites. Um, so uh, uh, I'm really appreciative that they kind of wanted to partner with us and kind of get exposed to you guys and, and, and the gyms that we're going to, and they're gonna help us you know, be able to go to more gyms uh, throughout the country. So today, we are heading over to New York City and Body Space Fitness. My friend Kelvin Gary, uh, it's been there for six years. He has uh, two floors now. He's done some really great stuff. I actually hosted a, a, uh, a workshop there with Mike Boyle, Devin McConnell, Reggie Grant, and Mark Fitzgerald back in December. And uh, they're doing such great things there uh, with a the big staff, uh, making some waves in the city uh, with a couple really kind of cool revenue streams. Kelvin has a lot to say. So let's head down to Union Square in New York City to Body Space Fitness. All right, hey guys, welcome to New York City. We are at Body Space Fitness right off of Union Square. I'm here with Kelvin Garrett, the owner. Kelvin, thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We've been here before. We did a uh, lecture, a couple lectures with Coach Boyle, Mark Fitzgerald, Reg Grant, Devin McConnell. Had a great time here in December, so wanted to make sure we got a uh, chance to see the place and see what you did and, awesome. and check out some of, the, uh, some of the good things that you're doing here. So Awesome. Uh, we are on the fifth floor right now. That's, that's right. How long have you been here? So we uh, officially opened May 2012. Um, so this coming May makes six years. Wow. Right, six wow. years. Congrats. Thank you. Um, all right, now we have downstairs. How many square footage is this? So the main floor here, our main training floor as we call it, is a little bit over 4,200 square feet. Okay. Um, call it, you know, Three and change of that is usable. We have locker rooms and things yeah, of that nature. Yeah. Um, and then the second floor, which we just expanded to about this time last year, which is mostly um, administrative. We have a physical therapist that rents space from us. That's 3,100 uh, square feet, and that's the floor below us. Okay, so they rent from you. That's not somebody you, okay, great. Ex exactly. Yeah, that gets a little tricky anyway, I think, with physical therapy it and does. hiring them and who mm. wants to deal with all that stuff anyway. Exactly. Um, so uh, how many employees? Right now we have 19 employees, um, of which 12 of those are coaches. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then what are the rest? Uh, between front desk staff, administrative staff, um, you know, one general manager. Okay. Like that, so. Yeah. Any social media? Just out of you know what? curiosity. The, the normal gang does it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, we have some, some, uh, some youngsters who are good at social media. So yeah. And put, with put, that many trainers, like encourage everybody just to kind of post, yeah. uh, exactly. kind of post daily one thing. Exactly. And then you'll, you'll, you'll be ruling social media. Exactly. Um, so talk to me about the membership types. Like, are you doing semi-private? Are you doing group mm. classes? Are you doing one-on-one uh, -on -one training? Yeah. So, you know, we primarily special in, in semi-private personal training. Right now we're three to one ratio. Okay. Um, we do a lot of group classes. Um, we have a lot of people walk in for group classes. We, you know, we do uh, some of the class pass uh, stuff. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah, okay. we, we do as well. But what we let our training clients do is they get to add that to their uh, training packages, right? So whether you do private or semi-private, depending on the package that you have, classes are pretty much included in oh, okay. your package too. So the classes are there pretty much as an add-on for the for the training clients. Yes. Uh, and, a, and an additional benefit and the drop-ins and class passes of the world get to kind of benefit from that, I guess, as well. Okay, cool. Is there a separate membership with just like group, for example? Yes, so, so we, do, we do offer uh, okay. an unlimited group class 
package as well. Okay, great. Who, who's coming in here? Yeah, I'll just, okay. uh, I mean, for the most part, what's the demographic? You know, so luckily we're in a part of town that we kind of get everything. We got NYU, we got New School, we have a lot of uh, residential buildings and a lot of professional yeah. buildings. So, you know, it, it, interestingly enough, our, our main demographic right now is, is you know, a lot of professional females. Um, anywhere from age 25 to like mid 40s. Why, I, I, do you think? You know what? Um, I think because they, they're kind of serious about fitness, but a lot of them value good coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and they like to do things in groups, which is something that I just noticed uh, way back when, before I had the idea to open up a studio. You yeah. know, on a Saturday morning, you walk around Union Square and see groups of people just uh, post-workout having brunch and things like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, so I think they, uh, uh, they gravitate a little bit more towards the doing things in groups. You know, I, I definitely think there's a, a competitive part to it as sure. well. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's why. Yeah, um, safety in numbers, right? Exactly, exactly. Absolutely. And then in, uh, inspiration and motivation in numbers sometimes too. Yeah. You know? Is does the is the de that the location lend itself to the demographic? Is there a lot of the women that age who are in here working, living? Is that part of it, or? You know, I I, I think it is. Yeah. Um, I think it is, but. You know, like I said, that's our that's kind of our main demographic. We have a pretty good, you know, uh, breadth of clients from youngest being fourteen to the yeah. oldest being, you know, seventy two. Yeah. Sort of deal. But that's they make up the bulk of our and clients. Maybe we'll get to this later during the business talk. But do you, when you did, you know, when you found that out, when you started to see that, did you start to tailor any marketing towards that? Absolutely. Okay, you Absolutely. did. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because I mean, uh, luckily, luckily, we're you know, like I said, in a city where the market's pretty pretty broad and if you can kind of become a, a specialist at one thing sure. uh, but still offer a broad range of uh, services to to everyone then that's great so uh, you know that that did kind of like lend us to yeah, it, it did kind of bring us to a point where we were known for uh, being able to you know train female clients really. yeah absolutely all right well let's get a tour we're gonna start uh, on the fifth floor here mm -hmm. in the main gym and then we'll take a walk downstairs and then we'll sit down and talk some business awesome Hi guys, uh, Kelvin Gary here. This is Body Space Fitness. So I'm just gonna take you in, kind of uh, show you what we do on a daily basis, right? Um, so clients will come in here. This is our fifth floor. They'll, they'll either take the uh, elevator or the stairs up. Oh, we make them take the stairs, man. Come on. Yeah, I know. Five flights. Go to sleep too. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeedy. So when a client comes in, they'll usually just check in at the front desk if it's their cool. first time. We'll Bye. make them sign a waiver or something like that. But, um, you know, they'll check in. Sometimes they'll just grab a towel. They'll grab a bottle of water. You know, they'll take off uh, either down the hallway to the women's changing room where we have lockers, a uh, couple showers. Men's changing room is down this way. We have lockers and showers there too. Cool. Um, and when they come back, they'll come on out. First stop. Hold on one second. Is she here all day? She is. Sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're all day or, or like because I see you do have like some kind of a check-in. Oh so yeah, well. we, Aly Alyssa's here now, but okay. we do have someone here all day. You do? Oh, yeah, okay, from cool. six from five thirty to to nine. Okay. Yeah, so we have someone at the front just desk. Just in case but people are coming nope. with these other programs. Right? E exactly. Okay. So I mean, even even with our clients, we still just have them check in to make sure we we know they're here. That's yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, cool. So. Um, Sorry, listen. <laughs> um, so when they come back, they'll come on out. Usually they'll first, their first stop will be here. They'll grab a foam roller. We got every foam roller in the book, including, yeah, including the ones that turn hot and cold. Wow. Um, and usually we'll just kind of save this first block and square. I mean, unfortunately, I, when, I, when I opened, it was, it was like, okay, a box, how much can I fit into a box? And yeah, this was your only space. Yeah, you have down yeah. so it wasn't like we could create rooms or you know, create other spaces yeah. or, uh, for the session to flow at the same time. And it, you know, it just so happens to work too, the way our plumbing is, it's like set up in that corner. Yeah. So we literally had one option for where we could put the bathrooms. Okay. Yeah. Kinda, I kinda had to build around that. Um, but they'll come out, they'll foam roll, we'll get them warming up, get them uh, ramping up. Um, and more times than not, if there's a class going on, group classes about 16 people in size, that will all happen on the far end of the turf and we'll leave the rest of the space for our training. Okay, so and, with that though, how are you working that? Do you have enough 
uh, uh, equipment like balls and bands and, Ab and everything, kettlebells, whatever Abs you need. Absolutely. For 16 I'll, people. Okay. I'll, absolutely. And I'll show you when we go over to the other okay. side that we usually, sometimes we'll take some things over here, but we have uh, enough equipment for both sides to be standalone. And, yeah. you know, we program classes accordingly. Yeah, that's one thing I did notice. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, well, you know, what we try to do is the whole thought process in the beginning was, Big open space, right? Yeah. So, you know, we do try to situate as much as possible along the wall so that it's out of the middle of the floor and we can leave the middle of the room uh, to just be our working space and kind of flow freely between the two sides of the room. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of space here. And these, they're almost self-contained as well. Mm -hmm. You got like TRXs on each of them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they can do the pull-ups. They all have the bumper plates, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you have the things for the bands. Mm -hmm. Each one has a bench. Yeah, and we, um, we don't. You just share the dumbbells, right? Exactly, exactly. We don't use dumbbells in the group classes a lot, but what we do. Okay. We do use a lot of uh, ultimate sandbag work. I mean, uh, between kettlebells and ultimate sandbags, we do use a lot of that. Simply because, again, I'm on the I'm on the fifth floor of a building that's a you know 100 years old, so that's why you don't see any platforms. Really, we're not okay. kind of trying yeah, to make sure we're not dropping things yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but yeah, so we'll get every, everyone warmed up. We'll come over, do our core and plyometric work, um, and you know the way we program, everyone's kind of like flowing through the same part of the session at once. Um, and then at any point during the workout, if they have a pulling exercise with a cable, they'll come over and either use the, the Cybex or one of the Kaiser machines as part of their workout. Yeah. Um, and then they'll kind of flow back and forth um, in, this, uh, in the session from this side of the room. Cool, back and over, just the two geysers, right? And then yep. you have this cable as well. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the other thing with that is we have, um, between the Kaisers and the Cybex, we did, um, you know, trying to utilize as much space as possible, so we have a lot of uh, a lot of the anchor gym hammerheads, kind of like oh, around. Yeah. yeah, I've been seeing those around a lot. Yeah, exactly. we have a we have about ten or twenty of them around. So wow. if anyone needs to take a um, take a super band and loop it around something and give yep. us a row, or we you know use a lot of um, use, use a lot of uh, the band, the bands from yep. you know, from Perform Better. Um, cool. Kind of back from my days of working in a big box gym and not being able to get to equipment. Yeah, yeah, you gotta just... be creative in the big boxes when it's busy, man. Mm -hmm. Especially at the equinox. Exactly. Now over here we got this treadmill. Talk about this treadmill because this is a big decision. <laughs> yeah, and you know, long story short, I I, I kind of um, got my name when I when I did. Uh, Working in another gym, working with a lot of runners, uh -huh. and it just so I, I I wasn't even a runner at the time, but I kind of put a few things together and helped a few runners out. Yeah, and uh, Big so running city. It is, it is, and we have uh, a lot of running teams in this neighborhood right across the street. We have a big running store. Okay. Um, so I share that with the physical therapist who uses it for mostly for therapy, therapy reasons. We use it for um, you know. Um, people who are running and just want to get some miles in. Um, What's the advantage to it? What's it doing? So the Ultra G basically can take up to 80% of your body weight off of you as you're running. So for example, when I trained for my first marathon, um, one of the things that I wanted to do is see what do I look like when I run? So hooked up some sensors to me, um, you know, something called the V Perform. They put some sensors on my shin. They could see how, how many um, uh, like what my stride length was, what my cadence was, how much force I was hitting on each yeah. foot was, you know, uh, with. And we saw some imbalances and we did some things to try to like, you know, loosen up my hips, get my stride a little bit longer. But what we did first is we put me in the Alter G, unloaded me, try to correct some of that stuff while I was about 75% of body weight. Wow. And then slowly, and we could see real time that either I was evening out or at a certain um, at a certain percent of my body weight, some of the imbalances will come back. Yeah. So you can do a lot of work in there with fixing people's you know, uh, stride length, gait, running cadence, things of that nature. Uh, you can get in there and sprint and won't have to worry about a whole, whole lot because you're kind of locked in place there. Yeah, but, uh, and you said you share it with a physical therapist. Yeah. So the, the cost of it, how much is something like that? That model there is a little over 40,000. Wow, okay. Correct, correct. So, so yeah, if you don't have runners, Probably not going to get it. Correct. But, I mean, you know, true story, we, we had a client once who uh, had uh, a malformed cerebral palsy and had never run in her life. 
and she comes in we can put her on that thing and she's able to run and oh, she gets man. off of it and just breaks down crying it's so amazing and it's like you think about what we're in this for and changing yeah. people's lives and to see that see that happening like okay well you know it, it has a place in a lot of different purposes to it yeah so. that's amazing very cool yeah. let's take a look down the way you know the turf area oh okay so so again this side of the room is our squat racks uh, we have a, a batch of kettlebells here you know our trap bars our, our mega trap bar you know and that's kind of the the corner of stuff we got our <laughs> got our uh, stuff. got our uh, sandbags pads and hurdles try to keep everything because you know we use we use it all yeah. and trying to keep it nice neat and contained is yeah. and only 4,000 square feet is 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 uh challenging so again on this side of the room on this side of the room we have um this shelf contains a lot of stuff you know sandbags i actually had this uh shelf designed around the size of the sandbags to make sure that they could all fit in there. So, sometimes people don't put them all the way back in there, but I, t I took the longest sandbag and said, hey, this should be the depth of that. Okay, because yeah. you know what's funny is, of course, because I'm such a geek, I was looking at that, I'm like, I wonder if he had that specifically made. Because we hear a lot about that yeah. in New York because we have, so, you know, we, this is such an important piece, mm -hmm. the storage piece. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure we're using the space as mm -hmm. best we can. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Plenty and, of and then, yeah, enough kettlebells to where I can have a class of 16 and pretty pretty reasonably uh you know maybe if two of the four or five stations use kettlebells we don't have to worry about there yeah. not being enough yep. and uh yeah, like i have a few more stashed away downstairs too because from time to time we'll do like a charity event or something like that we might have class with 40 or 50 people okay that sort yep. of deal and then you have the treadmills over here yep. and uh, why are they over here you got to just anything to <laughs> yeah. somebody who's on the fifth floor yeah so originally they were on the other side of the room and uh, when I first moved into my building, there was a Taekwondo studio under me. And uh, about two years into being here, um, they renovated the f and turned it into an office. And the next thing you know, the person downstairs was kind of banging on the walls um, and letting us know that, hey, it's loud down here. And it's like, yeah. that, that treadmill is, those treadmills have been here for two years. And, but it's quiet enjoyment, so I had to move them. Same way, funny story, on the other side of that wall, You'll notice right here, I have a noise meter that, that tells us what the max, because I've actually had to go next door and do sound tests for us to say, hey, let's turn the music up. We can't use the speaker, uh, can't use the microphone during the class wow. during the day. Wow. Because it literally, from time to time, if you use the microphone and turn it over a certain number, it sounds like you're sitting right in the desk next to them. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's part of being in New York City, but being a good, you know, good neighbor too. Uh, like we, we really literally did go over and do a lot of sound tests to find like what decibel level nice, was nice. good that didn't like yeah. pierce the wall. Yeah, you want to get ahead of it. Yeah. Let me ask you about the locker rooms. Um, mm. You have showers in there. Mm. Um, and this is a question I always ask people because mm -hmm. sometimes, I mean, showers, it's like a commitment mm -hmm. uh, because they got to be clean. Mm -hmm. You got to have towels, mm -hmm. you got to blah, blah, blah. There's so much involved. Yep. Do you, being in New York, I kind of would have thought, you know what, maybe I don't need them because people are walking here, yeah. you know, but, but, yeah. but tell me about that decision to include the showers. Um, well, you know, we, we definitely had a couple people let us know that it would be a make or break sort of deal okay. or they would like to come more often. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I can only come on the weekends because I got I to gotta shower before I go yeah. to work. Um, we also have a good, you know, a good location and being where we are, we are within two blocks of pretty much every subway line in the city. Yeah. So we have a lot of people that come here on their way to places, especially in the morning. We have classes and sessions starting at 6 a.m. Uh, people come here on their way from work or on their way to work in the morning, or they'll stop in at lunch and get back to work or back to school or wherever. So especially in the morning, we get in the weekends, we get a lot of utilization. Okay, out. cool. Yeah, yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, so it was, it was the right investment. All right. Yeah, good. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, cool, let's go check out downstairs. Awesome. awesome. All right, so yeah, now we're on our fourth floor and essentially it's, um, we have you know, office space. One of the things that we, uh, we kind of ran out of upstairs was space, especially yeah. after we renovated. So we have kind of a, a meeting room where, you know, I said instead of having a, a normal conference room, we're gonna have like a conference room slash staff That's lounge. Right yeah, okay, so cool. there's some, some couches in there. That's where yeah. we have our staff it's meetings. Yeah, we've got many staff too. Yeah, that's where, our, you know, we have a couple computers. That's where our library is. People can go in and 
get on strengthcoach.com and do their research. There you go. Um, and also have like a TV, so all the you know library DVDs that yeah, they have, we can very cool. get in there and watch those. And um, you know, I'll rent this space out to to independent trainers as well. Oh, okay. Um, just I was gonna say you got some, you still got a lot of yeah, stuff. yeah. And yeah, the and the, Rx's are up on the wall. Yeah, so and it's, you're set up here. Exactly, and if it, if it's like really crazy up there, if we have someone who kind of needs to be out and away from things yeah. for a little bit, we'll we'll bring them down here. But you know, the physical therapy folks also kind of use this side of the room. Okay, they do yeah. have their own squat rack, their own cable. They got a okay. they got four tables back there. Yeah. Um, so that's another area that um, you know if it, if it's quiet and they're not here, we kind of use that as a as an overflow for training as well. Yeah, so um, their front desk and then in the back they got they got some bikes, et cetera, and some equipment. Exactly. And then they can uh, they can do their own thing even to like you said, to come in here mm. and and work with them on some training as well. Exactly. Now, how, how, is that a good feed for you in terms of clients at all? Or? Yeah, it it is, you know, because eventually you don't you wanna you know, if you're seeing your physical therapist for too long, then it's a, after yeah. a while you're like, okay, I know there's maintenance, but hopefully I fix things. So yeah. we do, um, you know, we utilize them a lot for if our clients come in and something's quirky and we put them through things and we know it's kind of outside of our scope, yeah. we'll bring them right down and say, hey, you know, can you have a look? And that's really convenient for us and kind of makes us makes us look good as well. But yeah, we get a lot of um, a lot of attention from their folks that come out of treatment or like getting ready to run and like I said we do a lot of strength training yeah. for runners sort of work so they'll kind of pass them over to us as well yeah it's a, it's a decision that you got to make in terms of there's a few factors hmm. you know number one like you said you're you're it's great to have a service for your clients a mm -hmm. great value mm -hmm. at number one mm -hmm. number two is maybe it's they're going to feed you i think you should make the decision based on them feeding your clients mm -hmm. then you're you're setting yourself up for something like hey man you're not sending me enough clients mm -hmm. uh, but also um you're, you're renting to them right Correct. so you're making so some they, revenue oh yeah they're, they're, way. they're paying so that's the way to go exactly exactly uh, so you you're trying to make or break your whole living on that but it's nice to be able to well, it's subsidize, subsidize some exactly. of this other stuff exactly yeah exactly and it's a buffer from the other people in the building yeah, right? yeah exactly so now it's funny that that treadmill that i talked about that was upstairs and noisy i actually have the office that's below where those treadmills used that's to be right. so it's funny i'll be in my office sometimes i'll look up i'm not going to complain <laughs> that's, that means it's busy upstairs yeah, so cool. so so we will also use the space for the, like workshops we had a couple foam rolling workshops we've done a couple kettlebell certifications um we uh quite often do the ultimate sandbag certification but usually we do that's a big group so we usually yeah. have that upstairs but it's great because we can have that upstairs and on a quiet weekend day during the summer um, we can still do all of our training down here. You know, we kind of move the tables. Yeah. You know, that's uh, one of the good things about the space is I tried to make things as interchangeable as possible. Yeah. Um, and down here, things are really, really interchangeable. Um, we keep our in body down here as well. And okay. um, we have a set of Normatex that we actually make the Normatech sessions a part of the package. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, so we actually kind of, um, you know, when you ask your clients, how much are you foam rolling? They're like, ah, uh, kind of not every day. When I come in, it's like, all right. So if I have to force recovery on you by saying, hey, it's already a part of your package, come yeah. in and do it. I'm gonna take you over to the desk and make you sign up for a session. So they have to sign up for a Normatech session yep. the same way they would sign up for oh, okay. uh, a class or a, a, um, a, a training session. But, you know, it's in their package. And they have, you know, they get it, but they can also lose it if they don't use them. So, yeah, um, cool. so yeah, try to just try to give them what they need to, to be successful. Yeah? Absolutely. All right, well, let's go upstairs. Awesome. We'll sit down and talk some business. Awesome. All right, cool. Great. Loving the space. Great tour. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, nice. First, want to give you this from uh, from Marigold Protein Bars, a little nice. sampler pack. It's nice. four bars with some snacks. Nice. Uh, Marigold is uh, all natural, non GMO, gluten free, uh, right. no artificial ingredients. You got to put those in the fridge, by the way, because uh, there's no art there's nothing, no preservatives. If, so. if they make it to the fridge. There you go. There you See? go. Thank you. <laughs> had, well, I already had one in between sessions today. So. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah, but our Appreciate Marigold. Now I'm able to kind of do this more, so uh, you know, kind of sponsoring the show. Um, let's talk about um, some of the challenges you faced in here. You've been mm. here for now 
going on six years, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and you've grown. Mm-hmm. You first it was here, then you you know you added downstairs. What are some of the biggest challenges for you that you you know kind of looking back saying, man, if I would have known, I might not open. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think you know some of the challenges are really kind of um, number one, making sure that you can find the right people. Um, you would think that finding the right people is easy. But it's not. It's the hardest part. It is not. It is literally the hardest part. Um, and just so it, everyone gets used to you and just kind of getting everyone kind of, uh, you know, to work with all the other coaches and to, you know, for me, understanding, you know, Coach Ball mentioned a few weeks back when they were here, you know, one of his biggest turning points was him uh, realizing it was about him developing the coaches and mm-hmm. not him training everyone. And, you know, that's. That, that's true, but it's it's easier said than done. It sure takes a lot is. of work. Uh, but then you know, surrounding yourself with good, you know, really good people, um, because we do work in the service industry. Yeah. And you you have to make sure that everyone's kind of on point. Yeah. So that I, I think that's one thing, and I think the other thing is uh, whatever you think is going to cost you, you know, multiply that by three, and that's that's reality. Yeah. Um, we yeah. I did an episode. Uh, for Strength Coach TV way back called, um, I called it Costs Nobody Tells You About. Mm-hmm. And I just went around, you know, like things like picture frames and tissues and mm-hmm. like that's not in the Perform Better catalog, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, like things like uh, that you had made there, you mm-hmm. know, things, storage racks. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a million things that, you know, we just, we forget like towels. Mm-hmm. And again, that's not, we're thinking flooring and turf, so yes. it's very tough. But you know, staying on that, the, the employee stuff, um, and I'm not blowing smoke, but when I did my workshop here with Coach Boyle, what a great staff. I mean, welcome with open arms. They all participated. Uh, they, they did, they were such a great, I could tell like what a family you guys have here. Mm-hmm. What are some things that you try to do mm. to instill that or to create that culture? Oh man. Um, whew. Well, just like, you know, I'm going to throw Coach Boyle out, there, Boyle out there again, certified nice people. Just always yep. look for certified nice people and always be that certified nice guy yourself and start there. Um, for me, you know, being a business owner in New York City, the competitive landscape here is really sharp and really dense. And, um, you know, it, it can be stressful at times, yeah. but I never let anyone around me see that. Um, yeah. When I come in and, you know, you wipe it and you... And you uh, you know, make sure that everyone knows that you're the captain of the, of the team, but you're also the the, the, the biggest cheerleader of the team as yeah. well. Um, okay. So, so yeah, making sure that everyone knows that, that you're kind of there for them, that you, uh, you're, you're there and available for them if they need anything. Um, and then, you know, when you have to correct them, correct them. Yeah. Let them know that you, you want them to do it, be great, and that's the only reason that you're correcting them, um, so that we can do the right thing for the client, I'll go do it, team. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that's that's it. Yeah. yeah. What are some ways that you've kind of marketed? Again, we talked about uh, we've been into a couple of places in New York City today, mm-hmm. and um, this this area is one of the densest areas of gyms, mm-hmm. like boutique gyms, mm-hmm. uh, uh, big box gyms, yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, and you know, fifth floor, fourth and fifth floor. Walking by, all we got is an A-frame out there. Mm-hmm. What are some things that you're doing to get some people in? Yeah. And you know, the, the funny thing is, we just got that A-frame about four months ago. Okay. Yeah. So my, my running joke is, uh, I'm on the fifth floor of a building with a Popeyes at the bottom of it. So yeah. if you <laughs> and if a you, cigar place and, and a cigar <laughs> place like next to that and a, and a golden crust. So if you didn't know we were here, you wouldn't know we were here, really. Yeah. Um, which means two things, right? If someone walks in that door, they didn't just stumble upon us. Right, so it's our job at that time to to set the set the tone, set the standard, and get them to buy in. Yes. You know? and even um, you know we we put the big strip of turf down the middle of the room, and you know my point there was in the beginning. I said I want people to walk in the door and take one look and say, I'm here to work. It's not a froofy boutique studio where I'm yeah. gonna get my nails done after class. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now they they walk in, see the turf, see the squat rack, and they're like. Yeah, this this is not a 
in the boutique fitness which is we were thing. talking that's becoming yeah. popular now people are trying to come up with all these new yeah ideas for little boutique with uh, based on one concept yes and you know and sometimes boutiques that are based on maybe multiple concepts or gyms that exclude people that you have to apply to be a member yeah. to. and it's like you know i i think we really don't want to look past the fact that there's still a lot of great training to be done there's a lot of great coaching to be done a lot of people and don't coach yeah. these days. They just come in, they put people through something, and they, they send them on their way. Um, there's not a, not a lot of great coaching, and my my thing is not a lot of bells and whistles, just hard work. Yeah. Um, so that's you know one one of the things that I kind of think about. Yeah, and we could see that. That's one of the things that I always said with Trent Coach TV is um, I don't you know, because of the podcast we talk to people on the Trent Coach podcast about the X's and O's, mm -hmm. but we get a lot of your philosophy just by walking around. We mm -hmm. see a big open space. We mm -hmm. don't see any machines, even limited on the cable machines. We're mm -hmm. seeing some squat racks and a lot of you know a lot of the sandbags and kettlebells. So mm -hmm. we can see that from that. Yep. Um, Let's talk about additional revenue streams. Um, what other some are some things that you're? I saw you got kettlebell kitchen in there, which is Absolutely. like I think I feel like everybody's doing at least some version of this. Uh, yeah. The food services now. Exactly. You know, for us, it's uh, unfortunately with the way the plumbing works out in a 104 year old building. You know, it didn't work out for us to be able to put a shake bar because okay. we, we literally would have had to put it next to the bathroom and in the middle of the training space. Oh yeah, yeah. So so it didn't work out for us to have a shake bar. Um, but we do, you know, have you know, between the protein shakes, life aids. We sell bars and pre-made uh, pre-made protein shakes, and uh, we do have a relationship with our Kettlebell Kitchen. Yeah. Um, they do a food delivery service that we you know we get a portion of um, a portion of, uh, of the sales is yep. like, you know kickback or re revenue the stream um, we do have some supplements and you know someone told me they said, you should be selling a lot of supplements and I said you know I got a GNC right next door right around the corner two health food stores a vitamin shop and a Whole Foods within a block and for me to try to compete on price against those guys is, is tricky yeah um, and yeah. I'm not in the business of holding inventory as yeah I like to say as well yeah. so sometimes we'll we'll, uh, we'll pre-order you know packages I I do have a, a wholesale, um, yeah, I just buy things wholesale from Europa and sometimes I'll package things into into packages of BCAAs, multivitamins, yeah. and whey proteins, but we usually do it pre-order. Okay. So we'll do yeah. a, a couple times a um, quarter, we'll do a pre-order. Um, but I, I usually don't hold it if, if people want advice. Uh, you know, I could, again, it's hard for me to compete on price yeah. with the GNCs of, of the world that are right across the street. Yeah, you know? yeah, um, sure. So, uh, as far as the supplements go, we don't don't sell a whole lot. Um, we it's interesting. We we actually make a lot of money off of in body. So we have an in body. Uh, one of the fifty three hundred models, and we will get a good anywhere ten to twenty people a, a week oh, that, that aren't members. That aren't members. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'd say I'd say ten to fifteen. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay. That will call, come by, schedule a session. How do they know you're here? That that's um, here. That it's here. Yeah. So online, there are a couple articles. Uh, so sometimes they'll Google, and then uh, I know we're on Inbody's website. Yeah. Um, okay. So they'll say they found us on Inbody's website, cool. and a lot of them will become uh, repeat clients. So they'll know that they can come back, and every month they'll do their Inbody. That thing well. is paid for itself. Then it has by far, or uh, by, right? And and absolutely. you've probably turned a few of them into clients, right? Absolutely. Wow, yeah. yeah, that's a good, that's definitely, you know, because in the suburbs, mm -hmm. it's a little different. I got my buddy Ed has one mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he hasn't really marketed it mm -hmm. to other people, but I don't think it would be the same in the suburbs as, as it would be here. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, the volume of people, but it's interesting that you're, uh, I mean, that thing's just paid for now. Yes. By far. Yes. Excellent. Yes. And then, you know, we, uh, we have workshops. Um, Right now, some of the workshops are paid. Some of the workshops are, you know, kind of free workshops yeah. to bring people in. Um, and you know, Normatec, we use a Normatec recovery system. Some people come in just to use the Normatec as well. Wow. You have a lot of recovery studios opening up in the in the area, so I imagine that that might fall off a little bit. But as I mentioned, we we make Normatec recovery sessions a part of uh, a part of the training package or a part of the package that yeah. someone gets when they sign up for training. Yeah. Now, did you basically say, okay, 
session, you know, the monthly is going to be a hundred bucks a month, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And then, but we're going to add a Norma tech. So let's add five dollars a session. Or did you kind of throw that in, or did you just say, you know what, we're going to do this for for just to kind of keep them uh, in the recovery <laughs> mindset? Yeah, both. Um, I said, how how can I create value and get people to want to commit to that twelve month agreement? You know. Um, so you add in the, the Norma Tech, you add in the, hey, we use an in-body as your measuring tool. You're gonna yeah. do it two times a month. People come in and traditionally pay 53 bucks to use that thing. You know, so there's, there's a lot of value into everything that you're not paying anything additional for, but you're getting it as a benefit yes. to your training packages. Yeah. So we use it as a, as a value add. Yeah, that's the key. I mean, you know, when you, it's never about price. Mm -hmm. It's about value. Mm -hmm. People have to really understand that and when you're, adding to the list mm -hmm. of hey what can we do we have physical therapy downstairs that's another because that's what like the same thing with the norma tech it could be you know you said there might be some recovery boutiques coming mm -hmm. look you know what though if they're here and you're offering it mm -hmm. the same thing i guess with the nutrition but it, the nutrition becomes a little bit harder because yes. you're trying to supply you know inventory it's a whole another business yes so yes. it does become a whole nother Headache. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, we also do a precision nutrition pro coach. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. So that's um, nice. for our training clients, that's a, that's a, again a value add to the package that they have. Yeah. Um, but we do have some so that come in and, and do just the precision nutrition pro coach. Wow, that's great. Yeah, they might live in another part of town or yeah. another part of the city or something. Yeah, so again, I mean, you know, when we talk about marketing, we're looking at in body, mm -hmm. PN nutrition, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Normatech. Mm -hmm. We're looking at these other companies to kind of just uh, almost as like a one off to kind of hopefully, if you have your systems in place, mm -hmm. to be able to sell them on some training as yeah, well. I, absolutely. And, I, and again, I, you know, we offer group classes. I do, you know, work with, I was one of the first studios on ClassPass back yeah. in like 2012, 2013. And uh, I look at it as a marketing opportunity. Yep. You know, um, a lot of people will, will complain about not getting paid as much for these people yeah. that come in and it's like, yeah, you're, you're gonna have people that come in and they're not fully, they're not as respectful as the, the traditional paying yeah. client. But you'll have uh, a good part of that population who actually already train and they train other places and they use that for yeah. you know their, their supplemental work and you know you want them to stumble upon you. Just like a sign out on the street, it's not gonna catch everyone you want it to catch yeah. certain people. And, you know, and, yeah, and you're, and you're obviously, you've been doing it for how long? The whole, almost the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, so obviously Five. it's working yeah. to conversion. Because that's a lot of people with the Groupon idea. Mm -hmm. It's a similar idea. People mm -hmm. know there's a tire kickers and they come in mm -hmm. and they're just going to go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. But if you wow them, mm -hmm. you can keep a couple. So. But, but they walked in. So yes. that, at that point, it's your job to say, hey, there's more to it than what you, the, yes. the appetizer that you got. You know? Absolutely. Good stuff. Uh, let's finish up with uh, just maybe one thing you would have done differently here. Mm. Ooh, the one thing I would have done differently is um, definitely thought out a little bit more the flow of the space or if it were possible to change up the flow of the space a little bit more. Um, I think that's like one of the main things. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know. It's hard to do with the, the like you said, the plumbing. Yeah. And, you know, the, the locker rooms are there, unless you kind of made a, a, a runway with a wall over mm -hmm. there to people get, it's just kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that's the one big thing from a structural standpoint uh, or from a gym and equipment layout standpoint. Yeah. You know, we were able to kind of build the amount of equipment that we had up uh, um, gradually. Um, and, you know, I think from a business standpoint, if there were anything I would have done differently, I, I, you know, right now it's, it's me, I don't really have any investors or, or anything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I might have thought about, you know, looking at um, maybe not a partner from a training perspective, but a partner from a, from a find someone around you that's, that has business acumen and maybe has started a small business that can and, uh, advise you, maybe potentially has a little bit of skin in the game. So, yeah. you know, it's interesting that it's so easy to just get sucked into the, the grind of being in the business that it really is hard for you to kind of pull away and work on the business, um, especially when you're, you know, transitioning from 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 trainer to business owner. Yeah. Um, you know, Alan and Rachel are like huge influences on me, and that's something I've been working to try to do is, you know, kind of 
pull pull away from the training yeah. as much. But uh, when you have you know another set of eyeballs that are that are kind of vested in making sure that the place does well, that's not your traditional employee. Yeah, um, it's it's good to have that second set of eyeballs. Yeah, kind of taking big picture, looking big picture strategy. Yeah, things. it's it's hard to do. We've we've kind of visited. You know, Coach Boyle mm -hmm. has Bob Hansen, mm -hmm. told not a trainer mm -hmm. working on that stuff. Eric Cressy has Pete Dupuy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're doing different things. Pete's not training anybody, mm -hmm. so they're they're not stepping on each other's toes. They're mm -hmm. each staying in their lane. They're mm -hmm. bringing it. So it's, the partnership thing can be tough, but mm -hmm. you're right. If, but if you knew, mm -hmm. then you could say, I want to get somebody out of the business mm -hmm. who's going to be mm -hmm. know these other things mm -hmm. and kind of handle that. That would be great. Exactly. But hey, man, this is great. You've been doing some amazing stuff, not Thank only you. with uh, your clients, but in the industry as well. I mean, it's Thank great you. to see all the stuff. And you know, we had our, our workshop here as well, and that was cool. Hopefully we'll be doing more. So yeah, thanks so sure. much for doing this. No problem, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Awesome.